Well, let's go now to someone who is live on the ground down there in West Texas. Let's bring in Eric Berger, senior space editor at Ars Technica and the author of Elon Musk and the Desperate Early Days that Launched SpaceX. Eric, thanks so much uh, for jumping on with us this morning. Just kind of set the scene for us down there in Van Horn as we are, are now looking at about uh, 28 minutes to launch. Latest, latest update. Yeah, good morning. It's actually a, a beautiful day. We've got clear skies. The sun is coming up over the mountains. And uh, Jeff Bezos and the rest of the crew members of the New Shepard uh, mission, the 16th one, just got on board. And so it looks like they're tracking toward an on-time launch. Uh, what's the most exciting thing about this? Because we do have private people having gone into suborbit. What do you feel on the ground there that's building the excitement? I think it's really the fact that we are entering the era of private human spaceflight. You know, before Richard Branson's flight, before this flight, more than 95% of people who'd gone into space had been government astronauts on government vehicles, you know, NASA astronauts, Russian astronauts, Chinese astronauts. You know, from this moment forward, we're looking at 95% of people going into space on private spacecraft, buying a ticket. So it's really kind of a, a change. You know, we're going from the era of government spaceflight to commercial spaceflight, and now it's involving humans. And I agree with you, this really is an important moment. Is that, Eric, it's Julie here, a positive change? <laughs> In other words, you know, it used to be people like Jeff Bezos, right? When they were kids, dreamed of going to space. Many of them traditionally have dreamed of going to space as an astronaut, as a public servant. Is that no longer available to them, or do you think we'll have two tracks here? Uh, we're kind of right in the middle of it, where we're seeing this sea change from this era of government spaceflight to the era of commercial spaceflight. Um, the fact of the matter is these private companies, and especially SpaceX, but Blue Origin 2, are moving much more nimbly, um, using capital far more efficiently. And so we're starting to see them do things that NASA has been unable to do or has been unwilling to do. And I think we're only going to see an acceleration of that in the future as these systems start flying. We'll see how much of a market there is for this suborbital tourism and, and how that extends into the orbit and the economy that we can build there. Eric, Virgin Galactic, it is, it is, it's a publicly traded company. Uh, is, some, is a good, successful launch today for Blue Origin, is it good news for, for Virgin Galactic or is it bad news? I think it's good news because an action on one system kind of reflects poorly on the whole industry. So the shareholders of Virgin Galactic, the employees of Virgin Galactic are very much rooting for, for New Shepard. Now, there is definitely a rivalry between the two companies. You know, they're, they're different experiences. One's a rocket launch. One's a rocket-powered space plane. Um, they both give a few minutes of weightlessness, and you can look back on Earth. Um, but an accident this early in the program um, would be catastrophic for the entire industry. We've talked about Elon Musk and SpaceX has already gone into orbit, sending you know its capsule, uh, the Dragon capsule, to the International Space Station. How long do you think it'll be before we see, for instance, Boeing with their Starliner actually transporting people to the International Space Station, and then eventually Blue Origin getting into orbit? So Boeing Starliner had an, had a problematic mission about 18 months ago, but they're flying their Starliner spacecraft again on a demonstration mission to the International Space Station at the end of this month. So it's scheduled to lift off on July 30th. If that mission goes well, then probably the earliest we would see a crewed flight on uh, with astronauts on Starliner would be next spring. And Blue Origin is quite a bit further. You know, they've got to finish their New Glenn rocket. I think that's at least a couple of years away. There are really some big technical hurdles remaining for them. And then they don't really have any kind of orbital spacecraft. So Blue Origin, I would say, is at least five to 10 years away from putting humans into orbit on their own vehicles. Eric, um, just want to tell people what they're looking at here um, next to you. Uh, as we see the Blue Origin, the top of the Blue Origin rocket, they were just dropping in Wally Funk, the 82-year-old female uh, aviation pioneer who's going to be making this voyage to space and will make her the oldest individual to have visited space. Eric, we've talked a lot about sort of the bigger significance in the space race, et cetera. I'm curious what you think is technologically most interesting about this particular launch. By far the most interesting thing about this launch is that this is a reusable capsule and it's a reusable rocket. So Blue Origin has built a new Shepard system to be able to fly this 25 times. You know, that would be really significant because only SpaceX has built an orbital rocket that can launch and land vertically like this, this system as well. And so the fact that you have two companies, two visionaries, two billionaires like 
Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos both saying that reusable launch is the future. Um, it, that's a big statement. And, and these rockets, and especially this one we're seeing today, is proving that out. And then, Eric, you know, finally, uh, before we let you go, I just want to ask what you think. It, maybe, you've, maybe you've talked to Elon about, you know, where he stands on all this, his, his takeaway on these, uh, you know, two events we've seen just in the last couple of weeks. So Elon is much less interested in going to space than he is in building the systems to put large amounts of materials and peoples into space. So he's much more focused on his Starship program. That doesn't mean that he's not going to one day go into space himself, but he, he's, he views he views being an engineer on a much higher level than he does of being an astronaut. So he's, he's much more focused on building Starship um, than sort of this, I think he kind of looks at this race between Branson and Bezos and, and maybe sort of laughs a little bit to himself thinking that that's really not the important game here. That there's a bigger game to be played. All right, there you go, Elon Musk. He is just like us. All right, uh, Eric Berger, Senior Space Editor at Ars Technica, author of Elon Musk and the Desperate early days that launched SpaceX. Eric, enjoy the proceedings this morning. Thanks so much for spending some time with us.